Hey, I want to welcome you back to Leading Edge. You know, this doesn't happen often. A changing of the guard in the athletic department at the University of Toledo. Until his April 30th retirement, Mike O'Brien had been UT's AD for two decades. That's an impressive run. Doesn't happen a lot in that pressure-filled position. But I now want to welcome in the 14th athletic director. The full title is something like vice president of athletics. I don't want we think of him as the AD. He's the 14th in the history of you, Toledo. Uh, Brian Blair, I want to welcome you in, uh, first of all, to Leading Edge, but certainly welcome you to our community as well. This guy, if he looks young, it, folks, it's because he is. 37 years old, I think, makes him the youngest athletic director in NCAA FBS. That's big school, okay? That's think division one, all right? Came to Toledo in our Mid-American Conference from Washington State. Yep, that Washington State of the pac 10, Pac-12, whatever it is these days, and having earlier work at places like Rice, Brainiac School down in Texas, South Carolina, Zia Cook School that just won a national championship. Uh, welcome to Leading Edge. I, I was reading up on you and found out that you'd been doing a whole lot of reading up on Toledo, the university, the community. Um, so you came here feeling you knew a lot about Toledo. I'm wondering, now that you're here, what stands out that maybe you didn't expect? What surprised you? What had any surprises so far? Probably the housing market first and foremost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I told the staff on my first day, I, I, I bought a house via FaceTime, had not stepped foot inside it before we put made purchase. And we walked inside it finally about a week before closing. And it was better than I imagined. It was better than the pictures put out there. Um, I told them I believe the same thing about this athletic department in this city. Um, I've looked at a lot of videos. I, I, I watched a lot of pictures and virtual tours and all those kind of things. Now that I'm here, it's better than I even imagined. Um, the people are warmer. Um, the downtown area and the revitalization going on there is just amazing. Um, all the opportunities and businesses flooding this market um, is really remarkable. And so I feel so incredibly blessed to follow somebody like Mike O'Brien. And Mike's been phenomenal. Isn't he a great guy? Mike, Mike oh O'Brien is, in my opinion, just top, top shelf. There's no yeah, doubt first about First class that. in every aspect. Now you come, um, Mr. Blair, to a school yeah, I don't, uh, this is not a rebuild job. I mean, a lot of things are already clicking. Your men's and women's basketball teams just topped the Mid-American Conference regular season. Football always competes at a high level. Let's face it, they will enter this fall as the preseason favorite to win a championship. In fact, when I look at it, that's really all that's been missing, isn't it? Is that, is that, is that trophy, that tournament trophy, that MAC championship trophy. I know you want to get over that hump, but you're the athletic director. How do you do that? Yeah, I mean, this is, I've told everybody, this thing's about going from good to great. I, I didn't run into a, a burning house and I got to put out fires day one. In some ways, that makes the job easier. Um, when you follow somebody that wasn't very good, because just by turning on the lights, um, you're, you're the savior. Um, I'm following somebody that did a really good job and I'm walking to a really good athletic department with really quality people. Um, so it's how we incrementally go from good to great. How do we take that next level in our evolution um, and really become the nation's premier group of five athletic department, um, yeah. top to bottom comprehensively? Well, let's talk about uh, college uh, sports. There has been so much movement of teams among conferences. I mean, you're telling me Oklahoma and Texas are going to be in the Southeast Conference, the SEC. What about Cincy and Houston, UCF, all going then out to their old conference, the Big 12? Should, shouldn't Toledo be looking to move to a larger conference and all the advantages that could bring? I think we're going to look at every single opportunity that's out there. We're, we're happy members of the Mid-American Conference. Our goal is to be the best in every aspect um, of competing in this conference. But we're always going to keep our eyes open to the best position to lead in every aspect. And whether that's conference affiliation, I think this whole landscape is changing. So nobody can kind of sit down and say, hey, we're good for the foreseeable future. Just because we don't know what's coming down the pike. There's so much change right now. I think we've got to keep eyes wide open on all for us. Yeah. You know, I live in a college town. I'm in Bowling Green. You may have heard of it. Um, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> We're going to get along just fine, I think. And let's face it, our MAC landscape is, 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 you know, is just dotted with college towns. Oxford, Ohio, Athens, uh, BG, and on and on. Toledo, though, that's a different dang deal with a built-in potential audience of hundreds of thousands just right there in the metro area. So how do you turn that into a difference maker? Well, I think every AD in the country talks about being the front porch of the university. I think the unique thing about Toledo is we can be the front porch of this city as well. Um, and I believe that because if you live here, you love this place, you're proud to represent it. Almost all of our teams have Toledo across their chest or across their helmet. 
we represent something larger than just this athletic department of the university. Um, so one, we got to do a really good job and make people proud to be affiliated with us. And we got to invite people onto the university's campus and come out to our games, support our student athletes and cheer on your city in addition to maybe cheering on your university. I talked about movement of schools among conferences a moment ago. Speaking of movement, the portal, which allows players to, you know, jump from one school to another without having to sit out the year like they used to. Some coaches I know decrying it. Some have said, hey, college sports, we're, we have free agency. But isn't it true that some student athletes, Mr. Blair, enter the portal, maybe don't find something to their liking or people aren't liking them enough, and then find they're not welcomed back to their original schools, which in the defense of the schools had to award that scholarship to somebody else who wanted to be there. What is you Toledo stand on that issue? I think the, the portal is good and bad. I think we need some tweaking, um, maybe put some time limitations on when you can do it and when you can't. Um, one, to just make sure we give everybody the same level of communication on when you're going, when you're coming, and what a team and a coach can depend on. If my teammate hops in the portal the day before the season, he significantly impacted my experience. Um, so I want everybody to have that ability, but I think we need to put some parameters about it. But I tell anybody, I hopped in the portal from Washington State, ended up at Toledo, right? Um, and so I, I think that's part of the new world order. Um, in terms of student athletes having those decisions in front of them. But I think we can add some parameters to better protect everybody involved. And players also now can 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 make some bucks off their name, image, and likeness. That whole nil issue, NIL folks, name, image, likeness, which, man, to me, I'm old school, I get it. That seems just one small slippery step from players getting paid. And then another separator, it seems to me, of where the rich will just get richer because their players – will have larger chance to cash, won't they? I mean, if I'm playing for the Ohio State Buckeyes, I'm guessing I have a lot better chance to make more money for myself than I do at Kent. Maybe. I mean, and, and you talked about the city of Toledo before. I think that gives us some unique opportunities in comparison to some of our peers. Um, so we're not going to shy away from that conversation. Um, I, I think there's advantages and disadvantages to be had. Um, but my, my sense is, as long as we still line up across from each other, offense and defense, and there are only so many student athletes can play at one time, there's going to have to be student athletes to go to other institutions. Um, so we have a chance to, to have a puncher chance um, and be the best that we can be here at Toledo. Okay. Example, just very hypothetical. I have several car dealerships in Toledo, and I hear that the University of Toledo is trying to get a quarterback. And, and you know what? I think that if I get this guy on camera, he could sell some cars for me. So, hey, I'm going to dial you up and say, I can pay him. And I think I'm allowed to now because I'm paying for his name, image, and likeness. I'll give him 100 grand a year if he'll hawk my cars. Can you do that? My understanding of the current NCAA rules is no, because it'd be a recruiting inducement. That does not mean it's not happening across the landscape. And I think that's one of the issues the NCAA is trying to wrangle right now, because I think all of us feel like the rules are a little bit fuzzy on this, what you can and what you cannot do and how are we involved versus how maybe some of our supporters are involved. And, that, and how do I put a limit on you, Jerry? You're not a Toledo employee. How do I tell you what you can and cannot do for a young man that's not a student or, or student athlete yet at the yeah. University of Toledo? So I, I think it's created a lot of challenges that we're all trying to wrestle with. Um, but this is, again, a change in landscape. Um. This one has rankled me, and we'll wrap up with this. Mid-American Conference, as you know, has become a one-bid league come NCAA March Madness time. It's whoever wins the tournament. I mean, you could have a 25-win regular season team, but they falter in the championship game. They don't get in, and I'll guarantee you that team out of the MAC is going to perform better, deserves to be in that tournament more than the seventh team out of, let's say, the Big Ten. I just believe that. How do you change that, Brian? Yeah, well, I think Kyle and Trisha built remarkable programs, not just teams, remarkable programs. And so now the conversation is, okay, how do we get over that edge? I know they're both looking at scheduling. There's some things we can do on our own end um, to strengthen our resume, come that conversation. I think we as a conference, I've got my first Mac meeting jet next week um, to be able to talk about what do we look like as a league um, in terms of all these rankings that the NCAA comes in to, to think about your body of work. Um, but there's a couple of angles, but just to depend on the tournament, I don't think is the right answer. We need to open up all avenues, play well in the tournament, but also open up all the opportunities to get that at large bid. All right. And what have they told you about the um, rivalry, the I-75 rivalry? Just wondering. <laughs> I heard there's a town down the road to compete with us. We're happy to compete with them. <laughs> and when you come down, I, I we'll be glad to welcome you, Brian. We'll, we'll look forward to meeting you and seeing you in person. But in the meantime, I wanted to get him uh, introduced to all of you at home. Brian Blair, brand new. Well, Started at the start of the month, athletic director at the University of Toledo, U Toledo. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. <clears throat>
go Rockets. See, I just did it. I, I, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I got a 20 for you when we get off here. All right. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to also do I Ziggy Zumba. And you ask around what that means. Okay. <laughs> be well. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jerry. And we'll be right back.